Batgirl number 13, Hope Larson rating, and it's Inaki Miranda on art. And this is kind of kind of like uh, between the first and second arc, you know, between you know the the, the Asia stuff and then the Son of Penguin. We had that the one Ivy sh- issue. Yeah, we had that Ivy issue on the plane, the one sort of one shot story. And yeah. likewise, here we have a one shot story before we get to the next arc. And this is a story uh, set one night, and it's a uh, e- Esme, a little girl who we met before. We met her in the library. Mm-hmm. She was like uh, Barbara was kind of like you helping mean, them train. You mean they're watching us right now? That girl. Yeah. Like- that girl yeah. uh, and she's out she's got like uh, all of her protective like skateboarding gear on yep. <laughs> basically she's got knee pads and a helmet on and all that and she's out basically being her own little vigilante she's questioning these kids about uh, what turns out to be a missing dog and Batgirl shows up and like helps and chases off the kids uh, and basically what it turns into is a team up where Batgirl's got this really smart little girl sidekick uh, mm-hmm. who's adorable and funny throughout the entire thing and then turns into an also team up with Catwoman because the whole plot is about uh, this, this uh, what's her name? Some, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the ridiculous... I'm, I'm getting to her. What's the ridiculous cat team? Velvet villain? Tiger. Velvet Tiger, that was her name. Well, I've never even heard of and I oh, run deep in DC. Yeah, I've not heard so... of Velvet Tiger. Although, it was kind of that weird thing though, even though I've not heard of him, like, yeah, she seems to fit. <laughs> like, yeah, it, I, oh, yeah, I have no problems with it, but uh, like, when I got to that page turn and reveal, you know, it was, okay, cool. But yeah, someone someone kidnapped, uh, what's what's the cat's name? Uh, Isis was the name of the cat, and Isis. The, the dog's name is, oh god. Well, he's the... he's the firehouse dog, right? So he's yeah. saved from ba- a, a ba- fire. Yeah. And... Ba- basically, the... the the silver tiger yeah velvet velvet tiger uh, she she is stealing famous cats and dogs and other pets from instagram well or whatever their fake instagram is in instagram pixed pick pixagram uh but she, she's stealing these these more famous things and it's like and that was one of the funny elements of the issue is that Batgirl's like wait cat women you have like an account for your cat and it's like yeah and i've got a deal with some cat food company yeah uh, or a perfume company um I love this issue. This was a blast. This was like a Shane Black directed issue yes. of Batgirl. Yes, it was because it had the humor and everything. The line that killed me, and it's just like, so my favorite, you know, like DC ladies list is it's kind of short and it rotates. You know, Lois is on there, and Barbara Gordon and and Kara mainly. One woman's been there, but I think Babs has just leapfrogged Lois for the for the moment. Oh my. Yeah, based off of this issue, because how she's dealing with Esme and, like, how she gets her trust is like, oh, I know Barbara Gordon, and she's told me about this really smart little girl yeah. and actually, at the to, library. See, to compliment the art, uh, uh-huh. their facial, like, uh, like sort of expressions during this, especially Esme's shocked face after she's like, yep. she told you about me? It, le- yeah. it legit looks like a kid who's, like, it, yeah. like shocked that, like, you know, someone's talked about it. It's, it's great stuff. Um, I also want to compliment the art in the previous page as well. When she's telling her about who the dog is, and it's like, um, like the, it's like the the, the the story, the flashback story of the fireman finding the dog, sort of bleeds into the like the panels that it's, it's like in. a fade. Yeah, in a movie. And I, I really like that. It's this really well done, really really quick. Um, all of their interactions. I love that she basically tricks or not tricks, but. Like, Batgirl's like, oh, I'm going to take you home now, so where do you live? And the sea cat woman, and like, you know, if you take me home, you're never going to find out, because she wants to, like, go on the adventure. Uh, yep. And it's just, it's just really fun, you know, witty kid stuff. The kid's really smart as well. She knows all these, like, science facts about cats and dogs. She wants to yeah. be a vet, except that she's allergic to, ca- allergic. to cats and dogs. So. Yeah, there's shots. She'll, she'll be good. You know what I mean? You can get yeah. your allergy shots. But, it, but it's adorable, because she keeps sneezing. Yeah. And well, that's what gives them away, eventually, yeah. is her sneezing. The line that killed me was Barbara talking about how much she hates Burnside anymore because the hipster boutiques that have opened up include a perfumery for pets. Mm. And she's just like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> and it, between that and the during the Emperor or the, the Emperor Penguin, oh, they're talking about New 52, the Son of the Penguin arc, mm. where they had that bar that was kind of inverted uh, that, yeah, she, right. that she went remember. to. Oh yeah, wasn't and the, she was kind of over wasn't, that. Wasn't the one that was also like a laundrette and a bar at the same time, and it was all the washing yeah, that, machines were on the, the the wall. That was weird. Yep. And so she's just like, God, I love this part of town, but I just can't. 
It says, whenever I think Burnside's hit bottom, another level of nonsense opens. Yeah. So, um, also, uh, just to compliment the art, I'm just looking at the page where they get to the, the animals, and, like, the cat looks great. Like, that, that's a detailed yeah. cat, like, you know, pawing up to get to Catwoman. This is good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they find the whole thing. Esme has a has a little fun moment where she's, like, hiding, and she throws out this little chew toy that looks like a grenade. Uh, yeah. And it makes all the all the bad guys henchmen sort of like you know just sort of scatter. Yeah. yeah, it's good fun stuff. Um, and it, even just the ending is really sweet, where they're like, "Oh, let's get a photo of the girl who saved Ricky the dog for the for the paper," because mm-hmm. uh, everyone knows him. So he's like a little town hero. Yeah, he's um, famous. And she's like, "Oh, I can't. My mum will know I snuck out." And she's like, "Oh, let's just take a photo of your feet." And she's like, "Do you want to be in the photo with me, back girl?" And she's like, "Okay." And it's just, it's just all sweet. It's it's yeah. like it's kind of like taking the Shane Black kind of like smart ass sidekick kid, right? But yeah. just also adding in the sweetness to it. It, it just it gives it this. I don't know. It was such a fun issue. This was a great one shot. Yeah, I was super into. I agree. This. I was super. I agree, into and I I felt the same too about the ivy on the plane. Like I said up to yeah. that point, that was my favorite issue thus far, and then this this one. I think this might be my favorite of the monthly books for sure. I look forward to Batgirl. This is my yeah. first read this week. Yeah, maybe I have to think about it, but um, uh, I, I will say this. Yeah. So the ending, like she gets her home, and it sets up a little little plot plot strand for Esme where. Mm-hmm. She feels a little bit lonely because her mother keeps not coming home till late. She works a lot since she feels that her mother's never there. And I, th- and I think that's setting up a little plot thread that we can kind of pay off later with her. And the other thing that I think this issue does really well that I really like is that by bringing Esme back, because she was good when we first met her as well, but like this was a real chance to like get to know her and mm-hmm. really care about her, is that it makes me care about Batgirl saving the town a lot more because it's given me a civilian face in the town that I care about. So now whenever yeah. the whenever the town's in jeopardy, whenever like oh, some villain might destroy the whole town, it's like, I'm going to think, oh no, Esme <laughs> is in trouble. And because of that, it makes yeah. me care a little bit more. Uh, so I think this issue was a really fun story, really made, really made me care about this new supporting character that you know can pop up from time to time, and I hope she does. Um, but it, it gave the, the town uh, a human face that I can care about. And you know, I think that's good. When they moved Babs to Burnside, it was this big, huge moment in the New 52, and ultimately it fell flat for both of us. Mm-hmm. I feel this is doing what they meant to. You know, it's it's tying her into that part of the city. Yeah, it's showing her reactions to all of this. She's Larson doesn't write her as too cool for school. Like she's not bringing people down with QR codes. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Supporting cast is a big thing for me. I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of the New Fifty Two suffered because it was scared to give character support and cast. I think Nightwing suffered from it. The New Fifty Two Batgirl yeah. suffered from it. A uh, lot, lots of books suffered from it. Um, yep. not that they didn't have any of course uh, like Batgirl's roommate was a big thing in the New 52 so maybe she's not she didn't suffer from it as much as some of the other characters did but it just it felt like they were they were so Superman was terrible for it because they they basically just you kept, can just leave terrible yeah and, uh, yeah, yeah but you, you know what I'm getting at like so I feel like taking the time to do this supporting character Hope Larson I mean I've liked both her arcs but definitely these one shots have been like the two crown jewels in the run so far yep so um, but no uh, I, I would say I'll, this is probably my favourite issue of the run mm-hmm. my so job. far so uh, no so g- g- great job uh, really really liked it 